Hello Internet! I'm making a long video on how to quit a 10-year career, uh, but that's not ready yet. So instead I'm going to riff on one of the ideas that is in that video, which is to play long games or play different games, which help us to, to win against those who are playing the more conventional games around us. So what I mean by this is not the distinction between finite and infinite games, as James Cast talks about, but the idea that by recognizing the games that are going on around us, we can almost opt out of them uh, and play different games that have rules that are more aligned that will help us to, to win them rather than compete um, with others uh, on a more short-term basis. So what do I mean by this? When I was uh, working for the last 10 years in the corporate world, I, I always had a sense that it wasn't for me long term. Now, being in there for 10 years implies that I wanted it enough to be there for 10 years. But I, I always looked at the um, people in the positions above me um, and thought I never wanted their jobs. I never wanted to progress to the top of the organization. So I never really wanted to play the game of get promoted, get promoted, and whatever it would take to, to achieve that particular goal. I knew that I wanted to, at some point, step out on my own. Uh, and the fact that I, I knew that helped me to make different decisions day to day um, to play this, this longer term game. So for example, when I was given various, let's call them opportunities to work into the evenings and weekends um, at my jobs, um, which would have helped me get promoted, which would have helped me get ingratiate myself with, uh, with leadership, that wasn't in service of the game I was playing. What that was doing was keeping me away from the the game that I was playing, which was to eventually step out and do something like, like this. Now, if I was playing a short-term game, I wouldn't have seen that. I would have thought, be thinking, okay, well, look, I want to get promoted on the next couple of year time frame. I will work this evening and this weekend, take on that extra project, impress my boss, uh, and and climb that ladder. But by knowing that that wasn't the game I was playing, I got the opportunity to play a different game, which gave me superpowers in that um, short-term um, time horizon. So I could say, no, I am not going to take that project. I'm not going to work that week the weekend, because by doing so, I won't be able to do my coach training or to write my, my newsletter or to do whatever it was that I was doing it would have looked like a, a weird choice, and it looks like a weird choice to those playing the game of getting promoted. But because I had a long enough time horizon, knowing that I didn't want to stay there in that setting, I had the chance to opt out and do something else. Where else does this show up? So there's two areas that I've seen so far. One I'm seeing quite strongly in the online creator space, where it's a very, an easy trap to fall into to think, okay, I'm going to pick a niche, I am going to optimize all of my output around that niche and attract a following who care about that niche. And that can work really quickly and you see it all the time on Twitter and elsewhere. The issue is that down the line when you want to be yourself in more broad ways or change your niche, if you do that, the people who have followed you to get to that point suddenly think, well, who is this guy? I followed him for that topic. What's this thing over here now? So what happened there was that there was a short-term game being played of I want to optimize to get followers around this thing and become known as the, the guy who does this, this topic. The longer term game, and the, the game I'm trying to play myself, which is why I'm making a video like this rather than the highly polished ones all the time, is I want to be as authentically and earnestly me as possible on the internet. So I want to be able to talk about any topic, go anywhere I like, and just be known as Michael Ashcroft, not Michael Ashcroft, the guy who talks about X. Now that means I have to play differently in the short to medium term, but that's informed by the fact I'm playing this long term game. In the short term game, it looks like I'm wheeling off in random directions and possibly losing followers, alienating people, confusing people, when what I'm really doing in the long term game is to set myself up for the kind of future that I want 10, 20, 30 years down the line. So it's not always obvious what the moves are, but again, having the long-term game 
which is not an infinite game. The game is not to carry on playing forever to keep the game going. I do have a goal in mind, which will stop at some point, probably, certainly when I die. Um, I get to make choices that those playing shorter games find less easy to access. And the third thing that comes to mind is in relationships. So this one's a bit easier to understand. If, for example, in a relationship you are having an argument, the short-term game is to win the argument, which has certain costs and benefits to it. You feel good in the moment, but there are some consequences down the line if you keep just trying to win who should do the laundry next or who should do the washing up. You, you can win those, but it's not always to your benefit. The long-term game is, well, I want to be in a relationship with this person for a long time, for on a decade scale. That's one long-term game. Another long-term game might be, I want to look back on my life and think of myself as someone who acted with self-respect and I can be someone that I liked. And those two things might be in conflict, the, the two different long-term games, depending on which one you opt to play. But again, importantly, it gives you the opportunity to opt out of the short-term game of must win the argument, must get this particular outcome in this short time, time horizon. And that gives you access to a whole new way of playing, which importantly, depending on who you're competing with, gives you a much greater chance of winning because you're not playing the same game as them. In an area with really intense competition and the relationship area, for example, here, but going back to the, the corporate career and the, the follower think situation on, on the internet, if there's a very crowded market of lots of people vying and playing in that short-term game, if you just switch to the long-term version, then your moves will look weird, your choices will look erratic, and there are probably fewer people competing with you because playing the very long-term game in growing a follower account, growing an audience that cares about you as an individual wherever you go versus people who care about uh, watercolors or whatever painting, which you might want to niche on, there are pretty few people who are doing it that way. So I just wanted to kind of cover uh, very briefly why I'm focusing more and more on these long-term games because it helps me get to a position where I think I'll be happier with the outcome so I'm not creating a box for myself that I don't want to live in in the future and maybe a bit perversely it's also easier for me to win those games because there are few people playing and competing on those terms. So that was a bit of an ad lib, just want to get it off my chest. I am putting together a much more polished, high production value, thoughtful video on all the things I've learned in stepping out of a 10 year career that could be useful for others. But for now, this is just exploring one of the key ideas within it. So thanks for watching and see you next time.